according to a source, a source, about 67 years ago, there stood on the most splendid avenue of Newport, a palace built by one of the richest men in New York. It was an incredible sight. There was a Moorish room, a Chinese room, a gallery of pictures of the most famous and modern masters. It was a luxurious, beautiful home. The owner took possession of it in May, and in July, his son, his only son, died of a low, lingering fever. During the seven succeeding years, the house was occupied by different tenants, but ill health or death visited each. It was found at last, after repeated fruitless examinations, that an old drain existed under the foundations of the house, and that unseen, it had been pouring death into the beautiful dwelling all these years. The walls were so impregnated the poison that the house, after remaining without a tenant for some time, was raised to the ground. When building a house, you really need to know what's under it. When building a life, you must also know what is under it. Is it built on a pure and stable foundation? We um, have been spending time in Psalm 119 over the past several weeks. I hope that it's been a good journey with you, for you as well as it is with me. And one of the neat things about this journey is that we focus on God's Word. We focus on God's Word. You know, that obviously we want to do that at any time. But it's really neat that Psalm 119 takes us back to God's Word. You know, when it comes down to it, isn't that what we're supposed to do anyway? Is go back to the beginning. Go back to God's Word. I think that we're all looking for stability in our lives. And as we see here in verse 49 of Psalm 119, stability comes from the instructions of God. Look at this. Psalm 119, verse 49. Remember your word to your servant. You have given me hope through it. This is my comfort in my affliction. Your promise has given me life. There are two words in this particular couple of verses that just kind of uh, jump out at you. But it's something that we're all seeking. The words are comfort and hope. Comfort and hope. The word hope here means to be patient with expectation. Seems like we keep going back to that patience. That's difficult, isn't it? But hope is patience with expectation. We, we have that expectation. The word comfort here means to have consolation, to be consoled. The Word of God gives us patient expectation and console us in struggle. The Bible says that we are to be patient because He is patient. Oh, wow. What a comparison there. The Word is the only truth we can trust. Now, understand when I say that, that I'm not saying other people can't be trusted. What I'm saying is that God's Word is the only thing to trust. God is the only one to trust. Now, if someone has put their heart in Jesus Christ, has, has based their life on God, then they can be trusted because their focus is on God, right? The psalmist must be going through some kind of tragedy, uh, some kind of trauma in his life. And we see this over and over again as we've been looking through Psalm 119. We've seen where 
it seems like it's been one thing after another. We don't know exactly what it is. There's a word in here that kind of gives us an idea that it's, it's a bad, it's a trauma, it's something, the word affliction. He's going through something that has given him grief. And we find here that the psalmist is seeking to be consoled. To comfort comes with both supernaturally and terrestrially. In other words, comfort comes from spiritually with God's direction and God's comfort through the Holy Spirit. But he also gives us comfort through others. He provides comfort for us through other believers. And that is so important. That's why it's important that, that we actually come here uh, on a regular basis and worship together. That we're not forsaking the assembly. Because we need that comfort from each other that God provides. It's so important to us. Jeremiah 29, 11 reminds us that God has plans for us. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your welfare, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. We know that God has the plan. He's giving us the direction and the comfort in our times of that word, affliction. Whatever that affliction might be. Second of all, we find out that stability, stability comes when we face opposition. Opposition in our lives is common, all right? I mean, we're always facing some kind of opposition. Look at verse 51. The arrogant constantly ridicule me, but I do not turn away from your instruction. Lord, I remember your judgments from long ago and find comfort. Rage seizes me because of the wicked who reject your instruction. There will always be opposition to God. When there is opposition, people reject God. They reject Him for His love and grace. They reject Him because of His truth. They reject Him for His protection and direction. And they reject Him of His warnings of judgment. You know, we can look at that word judgment and, and we sometimes think that as a negative thing. Judgment is not a bad thing. <clears throat> Matter of fact, judgment is something that we all want. Jesus reminds us that we are not the ones who are rejected, but Him alone. John chapter 15, verse 18. Remember when He said this? If you... If the world hates you, understand that it hated me before it hated you. It's interesting here that the psalmist takes comfort, consolation in that judgment. Why would we actually appreciate being judged? Now sometimes we, we think of being judged. We go before the judge with our attorneys and we hope that Oh, everything will work out and everything will go in our favor. That sounds like a negative thing, but this is different. When we go before the Heavenly Father and we are judged at that last day, at that last moment, we go before Him, His judgment on us hopefully will be for you. It will be of paradise, of heaven, of a wonderful, wonderful, eternal life. The judgment can also come to those who have not trusted in Him. But that will lead us or those to hell. And the thing is, we are all judged, but I like the idea of having that judgment of life. And we can only find that through the Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ. We are not judged by our own merits. And that's what's so neat about this, is that when we have that judgment in our life, when we go before the Heavenly Father, we are not judged because of what we've done. 
But instead, we are judged because of what God has done for us. Now, understand, it is important for us to turn to Him and, and to live a life that is godly and a life that uh, is trusting in Him, a life that has been reborn in Him. The Bible says that we must be born again. But judgment isn't because of who we are, because, but because of our Heavenly Father. 1 Peter chapter 1, 13-16 says this, Therefore, with your mind ready for action, be serious and set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires of your former ignorance, but as one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy in all your conduct. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. It is through the holiness of God, not through our own holiness, that we have the judgment of everlasting life. Thirdly, stability comes when we worship God and trust in His plans. Verse 54. Your statutes are the theme of my song during my earthly life. Yahweh, I remember your name in the night and I obey your instruction. This is my practice. I obey your precepts. Do you have a favorite worship song? We, we had a, some of my favorites this morning. You might like hymns. You might like hers. No, you might like hymns. Some of you are laughing because you're awake. Great. Some, you might like praise songs, more of a modern song. Um, you might like that rock and roll music. But either way, you, you like music, I'm sure, in a way that you can worship or praise God. Song is one of the best ways to express emotional attachment to our Heavenly Father. And the psalmist explains here that God's Word is the theme of His song. You know, sometimes we don't think about that, do we? We don't think about God's Word being a theme of our worship. But you know, if we don't go back to the very words of God, we don't go back to what God told us, if we don't go back to the fact that Jesus is the Word, then we're missing out on the greatest opportunity to know Him and to worship Him. The thing about God's Word and knowing Him and worshiping Him and the fact that it is a, it is a song of our heart is not just knowing the Word, but on the other hand, doing the Word. It's easy to get away from that. It's easy not to focus on that because sometimes our focus is what's around us. Our focus is more about everything else and not about the very direction of God. <laughs> and that's what we've seen throughout Psalm 119 is bringing us back to the very words of God. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I've read a lot of instructional books. I've seen instructional videos. Uh, there are some great books to tell you how to lead an important in a, in a prosperous life. Matter of fact, you can go to seminars that provide that for you, and you can learn how to be a better person or be a productive person or whatever. But can't we or should we not trust in the very one who created life as, as it is, the creator of all things, the one who created you, the one who knows you, the one who knows me, aren't we to go back to those instructions and not just know them, but to live those instructions. The Bible is the very direct communication for Creator God. 
following these words will be the only thing that will give us consolation and patient expectation. The psalmist not only recognized the, uh, the importance of the word, but knew how to put it into practice. It is not good enough to know the word, but we must live it. Matter of fact, James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25 says this, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but one who does good works, this person will be blessed in what he does. <laughs> of course, sometimes when I go look in the mirror, I would like to forget what I look like. But it's kind of interesting, if you go to God's Word, and you see it, you understand it, you, you are willing to study it, you're willing to let it become a part of you, then you're not going to just walk away from it and forget it. Literally, you take it into your life, you let it encompass you, you let it go deep into your life, and those words give us patience and expectation consoles us in the most difficult times. Trusting and worshiping is the key to peace and hope. And we're all looking for that stability in our lives. That doesn't look very stable, does it? At any moment, it's going to collapse. I, I, I love playing that game. But on the other hand, I, it's very difficult for me to uh, play that game because I have shaky hands. And you know what I'm talking about? I, and and I, I'm one of these people who I, I want to get it right. I look at the details and want to get it right. And so, you know, you take that one little block out and you push it and you turn it and it always stays up, right? No. Not for me. I'm really poor at it. And it collapses. The tower collapses. If we're not putting our stability, if we're not depending on God's word and our stability in life, then we do not have something to set our feet upon. Otherwise, we're going to sink. And the unstable ground will cause us to collapse. We have a choice, do we not? We have a choice either to follow God's word or follow our own direction. I don't know about you, but I put a little bit more trust in the creator God, the God of grace, God of love, and the God of stability. 